Jesus, King Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. Hallelujah. I'm going to worship you even if nobody else does it. Oh, what a basha, because you're worthy, you're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. You're King, you're Lord, you're Savior. Oh, my soul sings unto you. My soul sings unto you. You're wonderful, you're wonderful, you're wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we raise our voice. We raise our hands. We raise our hearts to you because you are worthy, 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 worthy. You were slain for our sin. You were resurrected for our justification. You are so wonderful. You're seated at the right hand of God. Oh, until all your enemies are put as a footstool for your feet. Oh, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Oh, if we don't praise you, even the rocks, the stones will praise you. Oh, but I'm not going to let any rock out praise me. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Thank you for the blood you shed. Thank you for the blood you shed. Thank you for the blood you shed for me. Oh, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Oh, you're mine. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, we, we believe you for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Such magnitude of an outpouring has never been seen before. Thank you, thank you, thank you for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon this nation, upon each, each member of society, upon all flesh. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the harvest. Oh, thank you for open doors for the word, for the gospel. Oh, in Jesus' name, we will boldly enter those doors in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. May be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, wel we welcome you this morning. We are so glad to be together. Amen. We welcome Miss Sigler here. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And Barry, is that right? And Madeline. Thank you so much for being with us today. We bless you in Jesus' name. And, and we're going to be praying for you for, we understand that you have a surgery tomorrow. Is that right? Friday? Okay. We'll be uh, praying for you that, uh, uh, you know, not only the Lord heals you, but uh, it's going to be a testimony for the doctors and everything. So, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, great, great. Uh, so you'll know that uh, we are doing a 10-week um, campaign on testimonies of what the Lord has done uh, in our people here, uh, for our people. And um, we have seen some marvelous testimonies, amen, healings and uh, financial miracles, all kinds of uh, uh, things that the Lord does. And it's, it's awesome to hear the testimonies because you can see the reality of the power of God and 
by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so today um, we have my mom and, and we have uh, the Barriga family here in the back. They just arrived here. We bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, my wife is going to be interpreting for them uh, from English into Spanish back there. So if you hear her talking, is she's not interrupting. She's translating. All right. And my mom is going to give the testimony, so I have to interpret into into Spanish here, into English, I mean. She said good morning. <laughs> Get it ready and then you have it ready. Come back. All right. Eh, muy buenos días. Eh, yo quiero eh, decirles que tener un corazón agradecido eh, es el que nos permite llegar a estos años que yo tengo. I want to tell you that uh, to have a thankful heart is what allows you to uh, to get to an, uh, the age that I am. Eh, con gozo y paz. With joy and peace. Bueno, yo tengo un testimonio muy grande. Hace unos años, eh, yo tuve un diagnóstico de cáncer. I have a testimony. Uh, years ago, I had a, a diagnosis of cancer. Y yo quedé sorprendida porque realmente... Eh, cuando a uno le hablan de cáncer, le hablan de una muerte dolorosa y, y muy pronto, ¿no? I was in shock because when they um, talk to you about cancer, they um, imply a very uh, painful death, and uh, I, I was really uh, surprised by that. Eh, pero yo, a cambio de lo que sentí en ese momento, fue eh, buscar en la Biblia qué decía Dios que de yo debía hacer con este problema tan gigantesco que era una montaña que venía sobre mí. Uh, when I uh, heard that, uh, what I felt in my heart was to um, start searching in the Bible to see what the Lord said I, I, sh I needed to do to face that mountain uh, before me. Y cuando leí que Jesús se había llevado todas las enfermedades en la cruz, eso me reconfortó. When I read that Jesus had taken all of our sicknesses on himself on the cross, that comforted me. En la iglesia yo había recibido en ese tiempo una serie de mensajes sobre la fe que mueve montañas. In the church I was attending to, uh, to uh, I had received some uh, messages by the pastor about the, the faith that moves mountains. Y eso me sorprendió ver cómo el Señor está adelante de los problemas de uno. What surprised me was that uh, the Lord was ahead preparing me uh, to face the problems that was uh, before me. Y al leer que se había llevado todas las enfermedades, entonces eso me trajo un, una tranquilidad inmensa. When I read that he had taken all of our sickness, that uh, brought a tremendous uh, peace in my heart. Pero el Señor me llevó a algo más. The Lord uh, took me to something else. Él me dijo, confía en mí. He told me, trust me. Y como en una película me pasó mi familia. And like if I was watching uh, a movie or something, I, I, I saw my family. Incluyendo mi madre y mis hermanas. Including my, my mother and my sisters. Y me dijo que no podía confiar en, en ellas que ellas me, me reconfortaran, ¿no? Para el problema que yo tenía. And told me that I couldn't uh, rely on them to comfort me or, or uh, help me in faith uh, with the problem I was facing. Me mostraba mi madre una persona muy eh, ansiosa, muy que se angustiaba por todo. You show me how my mother was a person that would um, get into fear and, and uh, anxious about everything. Mis hermanas no eran cristianas. My sisters were not believers. Entonces tuve que aceptar que estaba sola. So I had to accept the fact that I was by myself. Y cogerme 
de la mano del Señor que podía guiarme a lo que debía hacer. And just grab a hold of the hand of the Lord to help me what I needed to do. Y yo le pregunté al Señor, ¿qué debo hacer? Y el Señor me, me dijo que debía ir al hospital a hablar con los médicos que me habían citado para que me hicieran una cirugía, la cirugía, y ellos me dijeran que yo no tenía cáncer. So the Lord uh, showed me that I needed to um, go to the hospital and uh, have this appointment with the doctors uh, to have an uh, uh, exploratory, exploratory sur surgery uh, to, to for them to confirm that I didn't have any cancer. Entonces, eso fue lo que hice. So I did that. Yo llegué al hospital Jackson de Miami. So I arrived to the Jackson Hospital in Miami. Y allí hay como un hospital de cancerología dentro de ese mismo hospital. So there's a, a cancer uh, wing there in, inside the hospital. Así que permanecí como dos horas en medio de todas las personas que tenían diferentes cánceres. So I was there in the, I guess the, in the waiting room, um, uh, you know, among all the people that had different types of cancer there. Entonces, el, el panorama era desolador, ¿verdad? So the, the situation looked uh, pretty much uh, desperate. Cuando yo entré a verme con los médicos, when I went in to uh, see the doctors, eran cuatro doctores. There were four doctors. Y uno de ellos me preguntó que si yo sabía por qué estaba allí. One of them asked me if I knew what the reason why I was there. Y yo los miré sorprendida. I was looking at them surprised. Me parecía muy cruel la pregunta de ellos. I thought the question was very cruel. Y entonces les dije, sí, yo estoy aquí porque creo que ustedes son los que me van a operar para que me digan que no tengo cáncer. And I said, yes, I am here because I believe you're, you're the, the doctors that are going to operate on me for you to tell me I don't have any cancer. Ellos me miraron sorprendida. Uh, uh, they looked at me surprised. Pensaron una vieja loca más que entró aquí. They thought uh, one more crazy lady that is in here. Realmente me operaron. They actually operated on me. Y al segundo día me, me visitaron en la tarde. S uh, on the second day after the surgery, they visited me in the afternoon. Y me dijeron, le traemos buenas noticias. They said, we bring good news. No encontramos el cáncer. We did not find the cancer. Pero la historia no termina ahí. Uh, the, the story doesn't finish there. Eh, los médicos me dijeron que debía volver al hospital a los 20 días para el control de esa cirugía. The doctors told me that I need to come back 20 days later for the uh, control, the appointment. Y yo volví a los 20 días. I came back 20 day, days later. Y a los tres días me llamaron. Three days later, they called me back again. Que necesitaban hablar conmigo con urgencia. They needed to talk to me urgently. Y cuando yo llegué al hospital, when I get to the hospital and spoke with them, estaban muy contentos. They were very happy now. Me dijeron, ahora sí le encontramos el cáncer. They said, now we did find the cancer. Yo no sabía que a una persona le podían resultar dos cánceres. I, I never thought that they could find two cancers in a person. Entonces, eh, realmente no estaba preparada para esa mala noticia. I was re wasn't really prepared for that bad news. En ese momento, Jacqueline Onassis moría de cáncer linfático. It, that was the time when uh, Jacqueline Onassis was uh, dying of uh, lymphatic uh, cancer. Y yo entendí que mi cáncer era linfático. And I understood by what they said that my cancer was lymphatic. Is, is, is the lymphs, right? Or lymphs cancer. Lymph, no. Pero no, mi cáncer no era linfático, era cervical. But it wasn't that kind, it was cervical. Sí, es en la parte baja del estómago. Like in the lower part of your stomach. Y entré a la cirugía. Ah, regresé a mi, uh, no pude regresar a mi casa, me tuvieron que sacar del hospital. I was so in shock that I couldn't go back um, by myself home. Porque no fui capaz de manejar. I was in, I didn't feel able to, to drive my car. Yo sentí como que se abrió un hueco en la tierra y, y desaparecí. I felt like uh, there was like uh, the, the, the earth was opening up and I was being swallowed by the earth. Fue muy dramático eh, lo que yo sufrí. 
It was very dramatic what I, I was uh, feeling. Pero alguien, eh, amigo, una persona amiga me sacó de la, del hospital y, y, y llevó mi carro y salí de allí. Uh, somebody, a uh, friend of ours, uh, uh, picked me up from the hospital and, and took my car and, and, uh, and took me back home. Eh, entonces, eh, cuando yo llegué a la casa, lo que hice fue buscar en la Biblia. ¿Qué, qué decía, qué, qué era lo que yo debía hacer? Porque yo estaba eh, muy, muy angustiada. Uh, so when I got home, what I did was to, to search in the Bible to, to see what I needed to do with it because I was very uh, uh, worried. Entonces, eh, volví a leer en la Biblia que Jesús se llevó todas las enfermedades. Entonces, yo dije, puede ser un cáncer, dos cánceres, eh, todas las enfermedades. Y tuve que apropiarme tan, con toda mi fe, que eso era verdad, porque la situación era muy difícil. And so uh, I read again in the word that it said that he took all of our sicknesses, whether it's one cancer, two cancers, and I had to uh, uh, grab a hold so firmly uh, from that uh, uh, promise and, and that word in the Bible because the situation was really, really desperate. Entonces entro, ya me tenían programada la cirugía, eso fue como un jueves. Y la cirugía me la van a hacer el martes. Um, so, um, that happened on a Thursday, and the surgery was already scheduled for next Tuesday. Ahí sí hablé seriamente con Dios. So, I really spoke seriously with the Lord. Y le dije, Señor, yo quiero vivir por lo menos 85 años. And I told the Lord, Lord, I want to live at least 85 years. Pero en este momento creo que estoy pensando en 95. But at this point, I think I'm thinking about 95. <laughs> but I had the, the fortune to have so many people, uh, lovely people that, uh, people that love me and uh, tell me that I don't look like I am 80. So I'm almost belie started believing that. Entonces yo sí pienso vivir por lo menos muchos años, muchos. Si Dios me da 100, bienvenido los 100. And so I am um, uh, planning to live many years. If, if the Lord gives me 100 years, I, I'll take him. Eh, bueno, me volvieron a hacer la cirugía. So they, they did again another surgery. Y no encontraron el cáncer. And they did not find the cancer. Pero los médicos estaban decididos a que tenían que encontrar el cáncer. But those doctors were so decided into um, finding the cancer. Entonces yo estaba en manos de unos que querían encontrar el cáncer. So I was in the hands of a, a, a group of doctors that wanted to find the cancer. Entonces hicieron una cirugía tan grande que se fueron a la columna vertebral y me sacaron nueve ganglios de acá y nueve ganglios del de derecho y del izquierdo, nueve. Um, so they did such a big surgery looking for the cancer that they went into my uh, spine and they took um, lymph nodes from the one side and, and the other side of the spine, uh, nine of them. Los, los ganglios son como satélites que transportan el cáncer a diferentes partes del cuerpo. The lymph nodes are like satellites that would, if, if you have cancer, they would tran transmit or transport the cancer to different parts of the body. Entonces tenían que examinar cada ganglio para ver en dónde estaba mi cáncer. Si en el cerebro, en el hígado, en los riñones. So they thought they needed to examine every lymph node uh, to see if I had cancer in, in my brain or in my uh, uh, liver or whatever it was. Entonces, eh, fue una cirugía muy larga. It was a very long surgery. Me dio un paro cardiorrespiratorio. During that surgery, I had a, a, a cardiac, uh, a, a, what you call that, I, a, my arrest and, um, and respiratory as well. Entonces, ya pasé a cuidados intensivos cuando salí de esta cirugía. 
So when I came out of the surgery, I, I went to the um, uh, emergency, the intensive care. Yeah. Y, y parece que el enemigo sí estaba decidido a acabar con mi vida, ¿no? So it looked like the enemy was really into uh, uh, ending my life. Porque mi nombre quedó apretado en esta mano. The bracelet uh, that they give you with your name, it was too tight in this hand. Um, y este brazo llegó a, a sufrir eh, una cosa que nosotros, yo pues en mi lenguaje digo que es una cangrena, o sea, que se vuelve negro, se colapsa todo el brazo, no tiene circulación y hay que apuntarlo. So it was so tight that it was um, uh, 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 hindering the circulation. So it, since I was in recovery, I, uh, I uh, didn't realize this was happening, but um, basically it, it lost the circulation in my arm and it was about to, needed to be amputated. Esto a mí me apareció una fiebre muy alta. So all of a sudden I started having uh, a very high fever. Pero como yo estaba tan crítica en cuidados intensivos, pues parece que no me miraba en ningún lado. But uh, so since I was so uh, in a such a critical condition, uh, they were not really checking for this um, in, in, in my arm. Y, y entonces ahora, si no me amputaban el brazo, yo iba a morir. So they said if they didn't amputate my arm, they I would die. Bueno. Entonces, cuando descubren eso, ya eh, empiezan a ponerme un antibiótico, pero me dicen que si el antibiótico no obra, digamos, en 24 horas, me tienen que amputar el brazo. When they discovered that, um, they, um, they started putting, uh, they actually discovered that, and then uh, they started putting an antibiotic, uh, but they say if this antibiotic doesn't work in 24 hours, we have to uh, amputate your arm. Cuando me están diciendo que me tienen que amputar el brazo, un doctor se acerca a mi oído y me dice, yo no sé en qué Dios tú creas, pero yo conozco un Dios que puede sanar tu brazo y voy a orar por tu brazo. Uh, when I was in that situation, there was a doctor that came and, and talked to my ear and said, I don't know what God you believe in, in but I believe in a God that can heal you and I'm going to pray for your arm. Entonces, al otro día me llevaron a mí la cirugía para amputarme el brazo. Next day, they took me to the surgery to actually cut out the, the amputate the arm. Pero ese doctor pidió que me hicieran un examen a ver qué tanto había obrado el antibiótico para no amputarme en el brazo. But that doctor asked for an additional test to see if the antibiotic uh, had worked to see if there wasn't a need for, for them to amputate the arm. Entonces, quiero, quiero compartir que cuando la vida nuestra está en las manos de Dios, no importa las tempestades que vengan, Él está ahí para pelear nuestra batalla. And so I want to share that when our life is in the hands of God, He's there to fight our battles, uh, no matter what the circumstance. For he is my arm. Y sé que el Señor ha guardado mi vida de otras, porque... Hace poco viví una muy terrible aquí con, con mi hijo, que fue bien severa, pero esa no la voy a contar. Yo puedo decirles que realmente eh, eh, mi vida es preciosa en las manos del Señor. Eh, yo a veces le pregunto, eh, ¿cuánto él, él me ama para darme una vida con una familia linda, sintiendo su amor, su cuidado? Eh, estar uno en las manos de, del Señor es una cosa maravillosa. Él es un Dios esplendoroso. Uh, so I just want to tell you that uh, the Lord is so wonderful. He loves me so much. He has given me a, a, a precious family. And so he is an awesome God. So when I realize I, I have, uh, uh, I'm in my right mind and I'm 80 years old and I can drive my car and all that, uh, I, I, I give thanks to God for everything he's done for me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
And I'm going to give the second testimony, the testimony for our church with what God's doing and things that he's done here at River Fire. We went to pray for Pat Aleknowitz, and um, many, many people know her. She went here for many years. She's um, gone on to be with the Lord. But um, she had just had a toe amputated, and she had on her heel a hole the size of a 50 cent piece, um, 50 silver dollar, 50 cent piece, you know. Um, many people may not even know what that is if you're young. <laughs> But um, this thing was big, and it wouldn't heal. It had been almost three months, and they, the doctors had tried everything, and they could not get it to heal. And um, when we prayed for her, um, we showed up at the church a couple days later, and Pam came running out. She said, look, look, and she put it up in my face. It was a picture of, Pam, of Pat's heel that had baby, brand-new baby skin covering that hole. It, it was completely healed, and it wasn't even a couple days, and it was completely healed, and God did that. He's our healer. He's an awesome God. That was an awesome testimony of God's goodness and God's grace with Victoria, and God is our healer. He's an amazing God. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So how many of you are happy with uh thank you sorry uh you know uh with what the lord is doing and that means that he can do things for you like that amen he don't have favorites amen <laughs> he doesn't have favorites and so um if he does it for one person he'll do it for another person amen okay so we have a very special speaker today my favorite preacher my wife is going to be sharing today so pastor pam is going to share in the word of god prepare your heart amen to receive amen. hallelujah we serve a mighty god don't we how many of y'all are enjoying these testimonies now, if you need a miracle, that can encourage your faith. Amen? If God healed one person, he'll heal you. Amen? <laughs> he healed everybody that um, came to him in faith. And so um, we're telling these testimonies because the Lord told us, begin to share the stories. Like uh, God told the Israelites, right? Tell the stories of how God uh, dealt with your enemies and how he performed mighty signs and wonders in your midst so that they can believe on him as Lord. Amen? So that's the reason why we're telling these stories, so that people will be encouraged to believe on the Lord. Amen? So um, we're going to jump into it this morning. If you will, go with me to Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And something I had in my heart uh, this, um, this week was where Jesus said, you know, for us to take his yoke. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about getting in the yoke. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what yokes are, but uh, um, there are people that you need to carry heavy loads. And back in the Bible days, they would get two ox. And they would put this wood thing and a harness over them, and it went fitted over their necks and their shoulders where they wouldn't be in pain when they were carrying the load. And they were used to carry heavy loads to help with a mission or help with a purpose. And, you know, you and I, too, are called to carry some things and help with the mission but Jesus wants us to get yoked up with him, amen, and let him carry his part. His part's the heavy part, amen. And there's certain things, and we're going to see from the scripture this morning, that you shouldn't be carrying. You were never designed to carry certain things. He carries that for us, amen. So that's what we're going to be looking at. It says a yoke was a harness used by oxen and other animals, to ease the work of hauling a load. It was also meant as a um, designation of servitude and carrying the burden of a task or a mission. When Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, 
He means that we are to submit to him every day in every way. So to be yoked to Jesus means to serve and obey him. Amen? How many of y'all know that when those oxen are, are carrying that load, they're doing a service? They're doing an act of service to help out. <laughs> and you know, Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. He said, but I came to serve. He was a servant. He had a servant's heart. And, you know, he even washed the disciples' feet. He even washed the feet of the one that betrayed him. Amen? He was a servant. He came to serve. And uh, that's what's going to happen when we decide to yoke up with Jesus, to get in his yoke, to take his yoke on us. And uh, we're going to get side by side. The harness kept the two animals close together. How many of you know it's important to continue to walk closely to the Lord? Amen? And so that's the purpose of his yoke when he's telling you, come, let me put this yoke on you. And he said, my yoke is easy. What does that mean? My yoke is a good yoke. It's a manageable yoke. It's not something that's going to overburden you. When he was talking about uh, in this context here, he is addressing even religious people, the religious leaders of the day that put heavy burdens on the people, right? They overloaded them with all kinds of do's and don'ts and traditions and things that they themselves weren't even willing to do. And that's what Jesus said to them. He said, you put heavy loads on people, and you're wanting them to do things that you yourself's not even willing to do. And Jesus, you know, he was very blunt, very direct with religious uh, hypocrites, right? How many of y'all have ever been around a hypocrite? What is a hypocrite? Jesus addressed the hypocrites, and he says, you serve me with your mouth, you got a lot of lip service, right? You talk the right things, but what does he say? Your heart is far from me. He says, you're like a dirty cup. You're trying to clean up the outside, and you're all dirty on the inside. The, how many of you know the work of Christ starts from the inside out? Isn't that right? We let him cleanse our hearts. We let him go to the heart of the issue. And then he begins to train us. Amen? And um, so the religious leaders, they got really upset with Jesus when he talked real blunt to them and just called them hypocrites right to their face. Um, they didn't like that. But... Um, you know, Jesus didn't mince words, did he? He didn't like it when um, people were following blind guides. What are blind guides? Blind guides are people that aren't walking the walk. They're talking the talk but they're not walking the walk, right? They want to lead other people to victory when they, they themselves do not walk in victory. Amen? They want to get up and preach on overcoming, but they themselves have not learned to overcome. So what does the Bible say? When you follow somebody like that, guess where you're going to end up? He said in the ditch. You're both going to end up in the ditch. Now, it's very important when we're talking about yokes, there are people that God will yoke you up with. There are people that God will spiritually connect you with. And we see all kind, of dis all kind of examples like that in the Word, don't we? With the Apostle Paul and Timothy, right? Paul was uh, training Timothy. He was a young pastor. We see it with Elijah and Elisha and on and on. We see people that God has yoked us up with. Amen? And it's very important to stay yoked, amen, to stay um, keeping that servant's heart and an attitude of, of wanting to learn, amen, because the Bible says that you're going to know people how by the fruit that they bear. We're supposed to be fruit inspectors, Amen. There's nothing wrong with you judging the fruit. Amen. There's nothing wrong with you tasting the fruit in someone's life. Amen. 
You're going to know if it's rotten or not. How many of y'all have ever bit into a rotten apple? <laughs> it's not too pleasant, is it? <laughs> you know, I say this, that when I got married with my husband, uh, Pastor Saul, he was so loaded with the fruits of the Spirit. I mean, when I got around him, the man is so incredibly patient. And I wasn't very patient. And, but I got to taste of that fruit of patience. And guess what it, it, what, guess what it did in me? It made me, as I walked alongside of him, want to begin to desire the fruit of patience in my own life to cultivate it. And I love what Pastor Saul said when he was preaching on the series of leadership and the requirements of those that serve in the church. One thing he said is so many people want to lead when they need to be learning how to be led. Amen? So many people want to get into a position of leading others when they really need to be learning how to be led. And that's what we're talking about this morning, getting into his yoke. Amen? Because that harness is going to keep you close and close relationship with him. Let's keep reading about the yoke. Uh, two oxen are chosen to share a yoke. The first one is an older, more seasoned ox, and he's trained and hardy from years of routine. And the second is a new, young ox. He has potential, but he's inexperienced. <laughs> By sharing the yoke with a veteran workhorse, the elder trained the young. Amen? You know, not too long ago, we took a short trip, a short vacation, and we left our dog, Georgia, with Pastor Paul, which is otherwise known as the dog whisperer. <laughs> and guess what happened to Georgia when we got back? You know what? Just her being around other dogs that were disciplined, that had the experience of, of not pulling ahead when you're walking them. She got that pack training for, what was it, four days, I think it was. It was amazing when we got back the transformation in that dog. <laughs> now, she's still got a ways to go, granted. She's still got some training to do. But I'm telling you, when I took her on a walk, she didn't try to pull me down the road anymore. She, she kept in step right beside me. Why? Because she had spent some time with other dogs that had the experience, that had the training, and she learned from them. Amen? So that's, what that, that's the whole purpose of the ox, right, and the yoke. When you get in and you take on the yoke with Jesus, guess what? He's got a lot more experience than you. He's the teacher. He's the heavy lifter. Amen? He carries those loads. He carries those burdens. Amen? And uh, so it's very important. God will place people in your life like those oxen that are more experienced than you more developed. You know, just like Georgia needed that pack training, that's what church is for believers. You're coming into a pack, <laughs> and you got a mixture of people at all different spiritual levels. Isn't that right? You've got some that have a wealth of knowledge and experience that have been in this thing a number of years. They're of discipline. They have strength. Amen. And guess what? When you begin to come into the pack, <laughs> when you begin coming to church, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not calling you dogs this morning. <laughs> And if I did, don't get offended. Remember the lady in the Bible that Jesus said, My, I don't give the bread to dogs. 
She didn't get offended. So don't get offended that I'm uh, using the example of a pack this morning. Amen. <laughs> Say, at least the dogs are worthy of the crumbs from the master's table. He's trying to throw you a fruit, uh, few crumbs this morning. Are you hungry enough to not get offended and eat it? Amen. Aren't you glad that lady didn't get offended? She ate the crumbs. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there's some people that miss out on the crumbs because they get offended. And they miss what God wants to feed them. Amen. So it's important to come to church and form part of a local body. When you get around other believers that are stronger than you in the Lord, guess what? You'll begin to see, oh, wow, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't be doing that anymore. Hey, I need to get stronger in that area. Amen. I need to get more developed in that area. Or maybe I shouldn't dress that way anymore. Amen. I'm talking about a modest way of dressing. You, we're not legalistic here in this church. Amen? We want you to come as you are, but, uh, you know, make sure you're covered up in the right areas. <laughs> and if you're not, guess what? You'll learn to be. Amen? As you come in with other believers, you'll learn that. Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? So let's go to Matthew 11, 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now you see, he's issue, he is issuing an invitation. Who is the invitation going out to? Those that labor, those that are tired, those that are weary, those that are burdened down, heavy laden with burdens, amen? Um, have you ever been around somebody or maybe you're going through a hard situation and it seems like the burden's too heavy to carry, right? He's addressing, he's addressing those kind of people that feel so weary and they feel so weighed down by burdens. This is the invitation he's giving to those people. He says, what? Come unto who? Come unto me. Amen? You know, sometimes when we go through something hard and we're weighed down by burdens and hard situations, we go to everybody sometimes, don't we? We get on the phone. We run to them. We tell them about our circumstance, our situation. And it seems like we go everywhere else but to the Lord. And he's saying, if you feel that way, come to me. He's offering an invitation to come to him. Amen. And he says, come to me, all you weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. He's wanting you to enter into some rest. Amen. To some fulfillment and contentment. Amen. Where you learn to take a pause, take an intermission. That's what that means. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Amen. Now, we've already said that the yoke is uh, symbolic of servitude service amen having a servant's heart serving doing our part that he's called us to do if you've gotten anything from the blood covenant messages that Saul has been uh, teaching on one main thing that I have gotten from that series of messages is uh, we've heard a one-sided message for many years haven't we all that Jesus can do for you, all that he's given for you. But what about all we're supposed to give to him? Amen. What about him giving it all? Now I got to give it all to him. Amen. I have to do my part. The Bible says that we are co-laborers together with Christ. Amen. When you get into that yoke, 
There's a co-laboring that goes on between you and the Lord. Amen? And so with the blood covenant, that's been very powerful, that point that he's been bringing out. Because for so long, all we want to hear is the side of what he has done for me. Amen? <laughs> but there's something you have to do for him. Amen? And that's what this yoke is talking about. This yoke is talking about serving to. This, this yoke is talking about discipleship. What did he say? Come to me and learn. Learn from me. Amen? You know, when you begin to yoke up with the Lord, he's going to begin to teach you. Amen? You're going to begin to learn. Uh, the yoke is also a sign of submission. Amen? You getting under that yoke, you getting under that harness of the Holy Spirit, you submitting your will to His will. Amen? And letting Him use you. Isn't God good? So how many of y'all are ready for some pack training? <laughs> hallelujah just keep coming around the pack <laughs> keep coming to church it's very important you grow strength from each other amen there are uh, areas where you know i'm weaker in that you're stronger in and there's areas where you're strong in that you know i can learn from you you can learn from me amen we, can, we receive encouragement when we come together. Isn't God good? You know, I haven't always prayed the way that I pray. And, you know, I'm very conscious of my main role here in this church is in the area of prayer, intercessory prayer. Now, every now and then the Lord will have me preach. He'll give me a word to speak. But I'm very conscious that my main function here in this local body is intercessory prayer. Behind the scenes, just, you know, praying, going on behalf of others. Amen? And I didn't always pray the way that I pray today. You know what? My mother was a great prayer warrior. And I and she would. I've already told y'all she would make us come. Was it six o'clock prayer, Sherry? In the morning, she would drag four teenagers, grumbling teenagers, mind you. We didn't want to go. We didn't want to get up. We didn't want to get up no six o'clock in the morning and head to church and pray. Are you crazy? <laughs> but my mom would bring us to the church, and we were around that. We heard the cries. We heard the groans. We heard the weeping. We heard the word being proclaimed out of people's mouth as they, as they spoke the word and prayed out the word. And then my mom set an altar up in our home, and we didn't just hear it at church. We heard it at home. We heard her locked up in her bedroom weeping. And guess what? I, in uh, youth meetings, uh, um, the power of God would come, the presence of God would come, and uh, my mom would give, begin to pray, and heaven would come. The presence of God would come. She would pray until God came. And so guess what I do now? I pray until he comes. Amen? No matter how long that takes. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if it's an hour, two hours. I'm going to pray until he comes. Amen? Hallelujah. And guess what? I learned that from a seasoned prayer warrior. Now, did I automatically start praying like that? Absolutely not. You know, I have those quiet prayers, and there's nothing wrong with pa uh, praying quiet. There are times you're going to pray quiet. But the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus lifted up some loud cries and supplications to the Lord. So it's all right to cry loud. Amen? You know, there's sometimes when, you know, I'm, I'm so glad I'm alone in the house because the crying is so loud. 
It's one of them ugly cries. <laughs> but you know what? I learned that from getting alongside of a seasoned prayer warrior that knew how to get behind the veil, that knew how to get in the presence of God and bring the presence of God through her prayers. I learned that. And Jesus' disciples we're learning that from him too. What did they say? They could tell that was his secret. They could tell that was the source of his power and his anointing. Why? Because they said, teach us how to pray like you pray. Woo! Teach us how to get those kind of results. Amen? Teach us how to pray. You know, if you get in the yoke with him, you get in the harm, submit, submit your will, amen. Get in there, lay your burdens down. <laughs> Put it on him. You weren't designed to carry heavy burdens, amen. You're, you're designed to carry light afflictions <laughs> and a weight of glory, amen. The weighty things that he wants you to carry is the glory, the weight of the glory. If you will submit your will to him, if you'll become a servant and you'll begin to be discipled by him, he's given you a teacher, the Holy Ghost. He said, it's better for me to go away so that the helper can come, so that the Holy Ghost can come to you and teach you all things. Amen. He'll even show you things to come. Amen. So he says, take on my yoke. It's easy. That means it's manageable. It's not heavy. Amen. He does the heavy lifting. Hallelujah. You don't have to get bogged down with the cares of the world. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. He says, don't be anxious for anything. Don't be anxious for anything. And then he gives the, um, the prescription of how to stay out of anxiety. Uh, let all your prayers and requests be made known unto him. Amen. Like we said, he issues you the invitation, doesn't he? If you feel burdened, if you feel anxious, if worry, if you're worrying, he says, come, come to me. Come to me. Cast all that on me. Now begin to learn to enter into my rest and not try and carry those burdens. You put them on me. Amen? Isn't God good? So the yoke is a um, submission. It has to do with submitting. It has to do with servitude. It has to do with discipleship. It has to do with obeying. Amen. Keep in step with him. Hallelujah. Keep in step with the Lord. Staying in close relationship with the Lord. As long as you stay close to the Lord, he, you'll be learning from the Lord. Amen. It's when you begin to step away and begin to try and do things in your own strength your own ability, you get away uh, from the teacher. You maybe don't want to submit your will or obey or go in the direction that he's taking you. Amen? But guess what? It's, it's so important that we continue, continue every day to learn from the teacher. Amen? I learn something all the time. Amen? What did Jesus say to the devil when he was tempting him with bread? He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. What's that? That's present tense. That proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, it's very important. To hear his words. Amen. Those words that he's speaking to you today. He's the daily bread. 
<laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to hear the words that's coming out of his mouth today that are proceeding from his mouth in the present. That is, that is telling us that you can get in a relationship with him where you live to hear those words. Amen? Isn't that what Jesus said? Hallelujah. So I want to hear the words that proceed out of the mouth of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank God we have his word, the, the words that have proceeded. Uh, proceeded in the past right out of his mouth but how many of you know that you can be going through something and he speaks a specific word to you a specific word to let you know that he's right there all in the middle of your situation he's taking care of you he'll the a word will proceed out of his mouth right in that moment amen and that's powerful when that happens. You know, I was watching um, Karen Wheaton, and she was telling the story of when her prodigal, she was believing God for a prodigal daughter. Her daughter was away from the Lord, and she was believing God for her to come home. And she said that it looked so bad. And she was praying and praying for her daughter. And she was so discouraged. And she said she called other prayer warriors, other friends to come over and help her pray. She said she felt like she did not even have the strength to pray. She was that discouraged. And she said she got in front by one of her friends, uh, Pam, that came to pray with her. And Pam told her, uh, Karen, you're seeing a wall in front of you, aren't you? And she said, yes, I see a big, thick wall in front of me. And she said, well, I want you to begin to pray and ask the Lord to show you a weapon to knock down that wall. And guess what the Lord showed her? She said after she prayed for a little bit, guess what the Lord showed her? She began to laugh and laugh and laugh. And her friend said, what are you seeing, Karen? What weapon did the Lord show you? And she said, he showed me a feather. <laughs> a feather. What did he need to knock that big wall down, that mountain that she was facing, that situation that looked hopeless? To God, the yoke is easy. Amen. Get in his flow. Get in his will. Get under his submission. And those things will begin to move. Why, Why is it just a feather? Because he's all powerful. He's almighty. Your giant, your mountain that you are facing is nothing for him. He just gets out a feather. <laughs> That's easy for me to knock down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Karen began to laugh and laugh and laugh. And she said, um, she, she kept a feather with her just to remind her <laughs> of that preceding word. Amen. That was a word that she needed right then, right then. Amen. Right then for her situation, for God to tell her, there's nothing impossible for me. This wall that you're facing is easy. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we serve a mighty God? Amen. Get your feathers out. <laughs> Get your feathers out. Hallelujah. What situation are you facing? It looks like you're in front of a big wall that can't be moved, a physical ailment that can't be changed. What is your situation? Remember the feather. Hallelujah. It's easy. He said, my yoke is easy. It's good. It's manageable. Amen. That's nothing for God. An incurable disease. He's got a feather. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's got a feather. He's saying, this is easy for me. Hallelujah. Some of y'all need to go around and put a feather in your ear all day long just as a reminder 
Last time it was a crown, today it's a feather. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't God good? He wants you to learn from him. Amen. You know, the more I walk with Jesus, the closer that I get to him, the more I learn from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I remember years ago, it's when we had just moved from Columbia, and I had been hurt uh, by some people, wounded, um, and I was having a hard time forgiving. You ever been there? I was having a hard time letting it go. And we were in our house. We were having a prayer meeting. And I'm telling you, the presence of God just came in such a tangible way. And when it was over, everybody got up. The kids started going to their room. Saul went to the room. And the Lord said, stay right here. Stay right here. Don't move. I want to talk to you about something. And I mean the presence of God was so heavy on me. And you know what the Lord told me? He asked me a question. And he said this, what is your past doing in your future? I said, what? And he began to deal with me. Once and for all, you've got to forgive them. Leave the past in the past or it's going to follow you into the future. That night, I, and I, I did, that was a word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It was in that moment, those words that just came to my heart. And I said, Lord, you're right. I forgive them. I release that. I let it go once and for all. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. One way to know if you have forgiven is you stop talking about it. You stop rehearsing it. Whatever you rehearse, you're going to nurse. Amen? If you keep rehearsing it, you're going to nurse that wound. Amen? And I said, Lord, I give it to you. Well, I sat down that night after, after I let the, door, the Lord do that heart surgery on me. Amen? Cut that and pull up that root of bitterness. The Lord says you need to be careful with those roots of bitterness. Don't let that root of bitterness keep growing in your heart. It's got to be pulled up. Amen? Because it will defile many. The Bible says when you have a root of bitterness, it defiles many people. Why? Because it comes out of your mouth, right? You tell that person what they did to you. That person tells another person what they did to you. And before you know it, they're taking up your offense. And it has defiled many. So that night, I sat down. I checked my email. I got an email from Sherry. You know what the... Sherry goes, I was in prayer for you tonight, you and Saul, thanking God that the tentacles of your past no longer reach into your future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a word that proceeded from the mouth of God. At the moment that I needed to hear it, those were fresh words, full of healing, full of deliverance, full of forgiveness. I was free from the past. I, I severed. The Lord helped me by his spirit. Those tentacles were severed. Amen? You could be sitting here today with a root of bitterness or with unforgiveness in your heart. And guess what? God wants to help you today. That's why he says, my yoke's easy. It's not going to be in your strength because you don't have the power to forgive. You don't have the power to forgive like I forgave. Amen? Everything that I forgave you, everything that I forgave the people when they were beating me, they were mocking me, he cries out, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he says that love, that same love that he showed through forgiving them has been shed abroad where? 
in your heart. It's been shed abroad in your heart, but you got to let it come out and let it flow, let it be released. So I want you to remember, forgive. How do we do that? Get in the yoke. Get in the yoke. Let him put the harness on you. Let the teacher teach you how to forgive. Do they deserve it? Did any of those people deserve it that were beating him? mocking him did they deserve his forgiveness did they ever come to him and say they were sorry no you don't have to wait for someone to come and say they're sorry you can have a pure heart before God so he's saying you get in that yoke with me you get in that harness with me we're side by side you got a teacher with you and you're going to learn you're going to learn how to really forgive amen isn't God good? So I thank God that the tentacles of my past no longer reach into my future. My past has been buried with Christ. Amen. When the devil tries to bring up your past, you bring up his future. Amen. <laughs> You've been washing the blood. You've been cleansed. You've been forgiven. You've been made brand new, totally brand new. You've been made righteous and right standing with God. Amen? Isn't God good? So we're going to be discipled in the yoke. Amen? But the good news is, is we have a good teacher. And he describes how he is. We're going to look at that. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. Don't you love gentle people? I could, you know, I learn from people here in the church. You know, I could work on being a little bit more gentle. <laughs> Amen? I'm kind of, yeah! <laughs> uh, like Papa Hugh said, he goes, you see black and white, you're prophetic. That's why you see black and white. There's no middle gray areas. But how many of you know we can uh, cultivate that fruit of the Spirit? Gentleness is one of them. Amen? So uh, he says he's a gentle teacher. Aren't you glad he's gentle? Aren't you glad he doesn't crush you and kick you when you miss it? <laughs> He's so gentle and loving and patient. And he keeps coming back. And he keeps just gently nudging you, just gently inviting you to stay in the yoke with him, to stay learning, stay in his classroom. Amen? He says, I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Amen. But in another translation, it says meek. He's meek and um, lowly. Or Yeah. Meek is just gentle, lowly, humble. Amen. How many of y'all need to learn to be a little bit more humble? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, you might. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> How many of y'all can learn to be humble? I need to be more humble. I want to humble myself. Amen. He said he's far away from the proud, but he's close to the humble. But like I said, just as you, you get in his yoke, you get under his harness, you submit yourself to the leading of his spirit. He's going to teach you. He's going to teach you forgiveness. He's going to teach you humble. He's going to teach you how to decrease so that he can increase in you. Amen. You know, back in my younger days, and um, I'm ashamed to say this, but I like to draw a lot of attention to Pam. I did. But I had to stay in the yoke. And one thing he taught me through staying in that yoke, all the glory goes to me. Amen? It's all about me. 
And the only way you're going to increase is if you die to that. You let the decrease come. You be careful to only give him all the honor, all the glory. Don't ever point the finger at me, me, me. You know, because he's the only one that we sing how great thou art about. Not you, not me. Hey, man. <laughs> I listen to some people and I think they think that song was written for them. <laughs> how great I am. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to sing, Nelson. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> That's an inside thing between me and Nelson. Anyhow, he already told me I need a, a coach, a vocal coach. So anyhow, <laughs> thank you, Nelson, for the encouragement. We love you. Okay, if y'all don't know Nelson, he, he's a member of our church that watches online from Columbia. How many of y'all appreciate Nelson's faithfulness to the church? No matter where he's at, if he's in Brazil, Argentina, wherever, he is faithful to tune in online, and we appreciate that. And he even gives online. Amen. How awesome is that? Amen. So in that yoke, we're, we're going to be taught, but we're being taught by a gentle, good, humble teacher. You know, the Pharisees, when he was getting on to them, and he said, you, you put all these religious traditions, loads on people. You're trying to put, put that on them, put weights on them that they can't even carry. They can't fulfill them. He said, but my yoke is easy. It's manageable. Amen? Why, why can you carry uh, the loads that you were designed to carry? Because it's by his strength not yours amen now when the younger oxen is in the oak in the yoke yoke not oak yoke with the veteran oxen what is he doing he's relying on his strength amen he's relying on him to pull the heavy stuff amen and jesus pulls the heavy loads how many of y'all know that he carried that heavy load of sin, didn't he? He took it away from you. But he carried all that on him. He carried our disease. He carried sickness. Do you know you're not designed to carry sickness? That's his load. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, sickness is his load. That's something he carried. Amen? And he says that he redeemed us from the curse, and sickness is in the curse, amen? He, he became sin for us, amen? He carries that heavy load. Stop trying to carry the load you weren't designed to carry, amen? You could be so weary with battling a sickness in your body. You could maybe be at the point where you are so tired of even fighting it. But that's the importance of getting in the yoke. Amen? You're not designed to carry sickness and disease in your body. He carried it for you. Amen? And that's one of the things you got to lay on him. Isn't that right? you got to cast it on him, every care, every burden. Amen? Isn't God good? Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all want to learn from a humble teacher? You know, the Pharisees, it, it says about them, they like to pray in public. Woo! They like to do their giving in public. They like to, for everybody to see them, the attention to them. But Jesus was the opposite. Amen? He was humble. He humbled himself. When he came to earth, wow, what humility. What humility to humble himself and become a man, become a human. Amen? Aren't you glad for his humility that is connected with your salvation? And your salvation is connected with humility. Amen? Your prayer life is connected with humility. It says, if you'll humble yourself and what? And pray 
and seek my face, right? Prayer, you've got to be humbled to pray. I remember years ago in Columbia, our pastor in Columbia preached a message, and he says, if you don't pray, you're not humble. You're prideful. Why? Because prayer is saying, I need you. I can't do this by myself. I need your help. I depend on you. I depend on your strength, your ability. I don't depend on my own. Amen? Hallelujah. Those are strong words, but isn't that what the word says? If we humble ourselves and pray. Now, we were talking about learning to be more humble. One way you can learn to be more humble is by praying. Amen? Spending time in prayer, recognizing that you need his help. Amen? You know, we're very conscious of the fact we can't do this on our own. I can't get up and preach without having that preceding word. Amen? I wouldn't dare get in this pulpit if he hadn't said something to me to say. I can't do it. Amen? He anoints his words. His words have spirit and life. His words have the power of eternal life. Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Why is his yoke easy and good? Because it's full of grace. <laughs> it's full of his empowerment. Amen? Grace is the empowerment of God to do the will of God. Amen? He's never going to ask you to do something or tell you to do something that he has not empowered you to do or given you the ability to do it. Amen? He gives you the ability to do it how? I can do what? All things. Through who? Through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? What can you do through him? All things. I can do anything that he tells me to do as long as I do it through him and in his strength and rely on that strengthening. Amen? And one way you're going to get strengthened is by getting in that secret place. Those that what wait upon the Lord... He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They'll run and not what? Not be weary. He said, all you that are weary, heavy laden, one of the reasons we get weary and burdened down is we haven't yet come to him. Amen? Because he says, if you... Come and you wait upon me. Guess what's going to come to you? New strength. You're going to be raised up. Amen? Isn't God good? Paul learned the secret of entering into that rest. Amen? You know, Paul describes a lot of things that he went through that were really um, terrible things. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was incarcerated. He was shipwrecked. I mean, he went through so many things, but yet he said, I've learned the secret of being content in whatever state that I am. Amen? Content means independent of external circumstances. And in other words, what the Apostle Paul was saying is I'm yoked up with Jesus. The Apostle Paul called himself a servant of Christ. He called himself a servant and a bond servant or a bond slave of Christ. And um, a bond slave is someone that voluntarily gives their services, but they don't have the freedom to just leave at any time they're a slave 
and they're a voluntary slave. Amen. That's what the that's what the apostle Paul was saying. I have yielded my will. I'm now yoked with him. I he is I am now his slave. <laughs> Amen. And through all of the things that Paul went through when he said, I've learned the secret of being content, which means ex um, independent of external circumstances. You know, it's easy to be happy when everything's going good, isn't it? But when you've been beaten and you've been thrown in jail and uh, you are still content, he said, whether I'm hungry or well fed, he tapped into the contentment that comes from the Lord that is not based on external circumstances. Amen? Isn't God good? So Paul learned, the, learned that rest for his soul, and that's what we're going to end up with. It says, I am gentle and humble and hard, and you will find rest for what? Your souls. Amen? What is the soul? The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Amen? And if you're going through some turmoil or some torment, even in your mind, the Bible says if you come to him, you lay those burdens on him, you get in the yoke with him, there's some rest that's going to come to your soul, to the area of your mind. The area of your will, the area of your emotions. Maybe your emotions are all over the place. He says you'll find rest for your soul. Amen? Hallelujah. When the Apostle Paul asked for the thorn to be removed, his, his focus was on the suffering or the constant opposition. Through the constant opposition. And he took his eyes off of the thorn and got them on the empowerment, the grace of God. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen? So when you're yoked up and he carries the heavy load, his empowerment, um, you, when you yield to his empowerment, then um, begin, things begin to flow easily. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's stay close to Jesus, stay yoked up. Uh, let's stay out of fruitless toil. We cast it on him. We trust in his empowerment. He has promised to give rest to our souls. And the Lord's speaking to somebody this morning. I felt that when I was praying. There's somebody that's really been tormented in their soul. In their soul. And the Lord wants to bring rest to that. And he also wants to minister some healing this morning in that area. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. You know, you can come to church. And, you know, I've seen people come to church and never change. You can come to church and not come to Jesus. Amen? I'll say that again. You can come to church but not come to Jesus. But he's offering an invitation this morning. Amen? He's saying, don't just come to church. Come to me. Amen? Get in the yoke with me. Hallelujah. If reading your Bible is a duty, not a delight, you're under the wrong yoke. <laughs> Amen? You're under religious yoke of uh do's and don'ts and that's what he's offering take his yoke it's easy it's manageable it means it's a relationship you come into relationship with him we're reading your bible's not a duty it's a delight where prayer is not a duty something i have to do so much time every day no something i can't wait to do Something that is a delight. Something that I, I can't wait to hear those words proceeding from his mouth. I can't wait to have that close fellowship with him. It is a delight. Amen. You know, you are yoked to something or someone. You know that? You are yoked to someone or something. The devil has yokes too. 
He has yokes of bondages. Isn't that right? And his yoke isn't easy. It's not manageable, and it's heavy. It produces a lot of heaviness. And if you're in a yoke of bondage and you have that burden of sin, this morning the Lord is issuing you an invitation. Come to me with that yoke of bondage, with that burden of sin, and give it to me. Amen? Let me set you free. Let me get you out of that yoke. Amen? Because the Bible says it's the anointing that crushes and destroys the yoke of bondage. And Christ lives in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Who is Christ? What is the meaning of Christ? The anointed one. Hallelujah. The anointed one lives in you. The power to crush and destroy any yoke of bondage. Amen? Isn't God good? All right, let's finish it up here. So a bond servant is a person in a permanent role of service. A bond servant was considered the property of a Roman citizen holding no right to leave his place of service. And the Apostle Paul called himself a bond servant or a bond slave to Jesus. You know, the Apostle Paul was yoked with Jesus, wasn't he? Hallelujah. He learned to get in that ease, no matter what his circumstances were. If they were hard, if they were easy, he learned to stay in the yoke and learn from the teacher how to not to lose his joy. Amen? Hallelujah. You can do all things, all things through Christ. Amen? He is offering refreshing if you're weighed down with cares and burdens or sin. He's giving the invitation. Amen. That, that come in and get rest. Come get refreshed. Amen. Come, come rest. Come stop from your laboring and your movement. Amen. Your fruitless toil. Enter into my rest. Amen. Let me work through you with my power and my strength. You stop trying to do it on your own. Amen. <laughs> Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm going to end by reading Isaiah 53. Four. Well, I got one more after that, and then I'll finish. And we're wrapping it up here. Some of y'all have already entered into a rest. <laughs> okay, I'm just picking at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 4. Uh, you can laugh at church. It's okay. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says that God sits on his throne and laughs at his enemies. Amen. God laughs, so you can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> Amen. So Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. You know, um, that word grief, or that word sorrow is pain, sorrow, anguish, affliction, grief, mental pain, or physical pain. Amen? Grief, anxiety, calamity, disease, malady, sickness. Amen? Now, th those are his loads, right? It says he bore them, he carried them. Amen? So those things are supposed to be upon him. He took them, right? He carried them. You're not supposed to carry that. Amen? If you have sickness in your body today, you can cast that on the Lord. Amen? And say, Lord, I thank you that you carried. You already carried this sickness. This is a load that you carry for me. Amen? Aren't you glad that God carried your sickness and your disease? Aren't you glad that God carried victorious cancer and that she's still here with us today? 
Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for a God that healeth thee? Amen. So um, something I was feeling when it says mental pain. You know, he carried that mental pain. You can, and that's what I was feeling. I feel like somebody's been in some mental pain, some anguish, some even maybe something from your past trying to cause you a lot of pain. Well, guess what? The Bible says that uh, Jesus was anointed. And he said that the Spirit of God was upon him. What? To bind up the brokenhearted. Amen? He's there to bind your heart up. He doesn't want you to go through life with a broken heart. You weren't designed to go through life with a broken heart. He wants to heal it. Amen? He wants to heal any area. Amen? Even in your mind, the pain, the emotional pain. He wants to heal it. Amen? He carried that for us. Any physical pain, any mental pain. Amen? By his stripes, we were healed. So I believe he's going to bind up the brokenhearted today. If you're here today and you have a broken heart, you don't have to leave with a broken heart. He can bind that heart up. He can mend it. Amen? Restore it. And um, I believe that God's wanting to touch uh, people in that area. In the mental arena, if there's any anguish, physical pain, there's any mental pain, physical pain, if there's any physical pain in your body, any disease or sickness, you can roll that over on him, get in the yoke with him, and say, you carried this, you, you carried that load. Amen? How long have you been trying to carry that sickness? Right? He carried it for you. And um, something I was thinking about today was that when Jesus carried the cross, when Jesus got right to the end before he was crucified, um, you know, they had um, spit on him. They had mocked him. They had tore his flesh out of his back, beating him so severely. The Bible says that he was beaten so severely that he was not even recognizable as a man. He was disfigured, bones, just, you know, swollen, disfigured, ripped flesh. And when he got to that point where he had been beaten so severely, guess what happened? They called on Simon to carry his cross for him. <laughs> You know, you can feel so severely beaten down, weary, like you do not even have the strength to carry a cross. But guess what? He's given you some assistance. And his name is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus got some assistance on that last trek, to the cross, to be crucified. Someone carried that cross. Someone came along and assisted him. And aren't you glad that he got help? There's help for you this morning. There is help. You know, uh, some psychologists may say that you've been so severely beaten and damaged that you are damaged goods for the rest of your life. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Because there is assistance in the room today. And it is the Holy Spirit that has come alongside of you to help you. And he's not just going to give you the strength to be crucified to your flesh. Amen? Because you can say, oh, this cross is too heavy. I can't bear it, the weight of it. Because he said, if you will come... If you will come and follow me, you're going to have to take up a cross daily and follow me. That means you're going to have to deny yourself 
daily to follow him. And you may be saying, oh, this cross is so heavy. Well, guess what? Just like Jesus got help, he sent you the Holy Ghost. He sent you the Holy Spirit, which is your helper. And he has anointed you to die. He has anointed you for burial, just as that lady broke that alabaster box over him and she anointed him and he said she has anointed me for burial the Lord has anointed you to die to your flesh to die to those areas that you need to die in stop saying it's too hard it's not too hard his yoke is easy his yoke is easy because you don't have to do it with your own strength you rely on the strength of the holy ghost to get up on that cross every day i'm not gonna do what pam wants to do today i'm not gonna say what pam wants to say it's not gonna be pam's will i get in that yoke with you i get on that cross with you and it's only through your power can i do that amen isn't god good stand to your feet well i want to lay hands on people that have suffered um, that have emotional pain that have pain in their mind i felt that and it may be through something that happened to you it may have happened to you many years ago but that pain is still there guess what god wants to heal that pain this morning you may be here this morning and your heart is broken i don't know why your heart could be broken or you are wounded guess what he wants to bind up your heart this morning <laughs> he wants to heal every kind of wound Woo! every kind of wound every kind of wound he wants to heal you this morning if you are sick in your body and you want to be prayed for for healing we're going to believe god to touch your body and we're going to believe with you just to cast that on the lord <laughs> let him he carried that sickness now you take up his healing hallelujah he took your place he took your place that's not for you to carry amen so i want to open up the altar this morning if you are here and you, I feel like somebody is literally tormented in their mind. If you are tormented in your mind, if you're suffering great pain, or if you have physical pain, or if you have um, disease or sickness in your body, we would like to lay hands on you this morning. Amen. Also, if there is anyone that is here, you have not yet come to the Lord. Amen? You haven't yet come. Maybe you come to church, but you've never surrendered your life to Him. You've never gotten in the yoke with Him. You've never laid down your will to Him. And from your heart today, you want to say, I'm taking that yoke. I'm getting in the yoke with you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to become your servant your servant for the rest of my life i'm going to vow to uh, for a life of service to you in the name of jesus hallelujah we'll just stretch your hands towards these people that have come this morning we're going to pray for them hallelujah you got pain in your body okay
Hallelujah. Well, God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll turn it over to Pastor Saul. Let's just take a minute to thank him, amen? Let's just thank him. Lord, we thank you for your healing power, Lord. We thank you for every life that's represented here, Father. We just thank you for performing heart surgeries, Lord. We thank you for the physical um, areas that were touched, the mental and emotional, Father. And we thank you that we're made whole through you, Father. We're complete in you and whole, and we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Wow, I learned a lot today. Amen. Amazing. Uh, and it really goes along with our series on, on Blood Covenant. Actually, we're uh, talking about this um, uh, important area in the, in, the bi in the Bible, in the Word of God, where uh, actually we are in a blood covenant with the Lord. And and you can uh, many times uh, Paul said that don't don't be unequally yoked together with the unbelievers. Meaning, don't enter into a covenant with an unbeliever. Don't get married with an unbeliever. <laughs> Amen. So and and we have talked that a covenant, a blood covenant, is like a marriage. It's basically you you become one, and that's what the Lord did with us. We become one with Him. Amen. And also one with each other, we're one body in Christ. And so um, that, that goes perfectly with uh, our series. And uh, I believe it's, it's very important to learn from him. Amen. To be humble, uh, to be meek, and, uh, and, and to find that rest, amen, that we need in our lives. Uh, the Bible says that, we need to enter into the rest of the Lord, and, and it's that rest of faith where we are trusting Him and in His, His strength. Amen? And in and, and, and the area, we're, we're going to talk about tithes and offerings and take our offerings uh, today. And um, in that area of finance, uh, finances, we, uh, we need to learn to rest in Him as well, you know, and one of the in one of the teachings, uh, we we learn how uh, God gave Himself this uh, covenant names. He was one of them is 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 our provider. He is our provider. It, that's His name, you know. Because in a covenant, there's an exchange of names, you know. After Abraham did a covenant with with uh, Abram, did a covenant with God, his name was changed to Abraham. That extra H is actually part of the the name of God, and so um, as well as his wife has uh, had a new name. And um, when you get married, you get a you know your wife gets a new name, and you get a new name too. Now you're you're her husband, <laughs> you know. Like I am, you know. Mo many people don't know my name, but I, they know I'm Pam's husband. <laughs> That's my new name. And so uh, you receive a new name when you enter into this kind of relationship. And, uh, uh, you know, but he gave himself this name, I'm your provider. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, your provider. So he has committed himself to, to that name in this covenant. That's his new name. I'm your provider, you know. And uh, Paul said that, that he shall supply all of your needs. Amen. That means that he's giving himself completely to you uh, for your needs. Uh, but also it means that we need to completely give ourselves to him. Amen. And obey what he says. In, in that area, 
uh, he does say uh, for us to, to uh, give our tithes and our offerings. And, and when we do it, it's simply a faith action, an action of faith where we're saying, he is my provider. I recognize him as my source. You know, you, you give to, uh, you don't have your heart connected until you give. Amen. Because it's, it's part of your life. It's, it's uh, your resources. And there's a nerve connected from your heart to your wallet. Amen. And if you, if you're wa- you know, many people are saved, but their wallet is not saved. Amen. You know, they, they went from darkness into light, but their wallet stayed in the darkness. And they say, why, 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 you know, things are happening and why things are going so wrong in my finances? Because your wallet needs to be translated from darkness into light. Amen. 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 So, hallelujah. You know, when, when I wasn't saved and, you know, I was partying with my friends, you know, when you're really drunk, you, you get to, uh, to be so generous. You invite the next round for everybody. I mean, I was, I, I sp- spent all my salary in, uh, in uh, you know, things for the devil when I wasn't saved. And, and it's funny how believers now get they saved, and all of a sudden they're not as generous. What happened? You know, I I rather to give everything I have for the Lord, Amen, because He's been so good to me. The devil wasn't good to me, and I I gave more than the tithe, and more than big offerings for the devil when I wasn't saved. And much more now to this good master. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, praise God. He was afflicted. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace, and it could be financial peace, was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. So that punishment... uh, uh, that we deserve, he received for us. And part of the punishment was poverty, lack. He became poor. The Bible says that he became poor so we, by his uh, poverty, might become rich. Amen. Doesn't mean that you're going to be a millionaire necessarily. But if that's what you need for to do the will of God, then he'll make you a millionaire. But it does mean that we'll be, you'll be... Uh, very amply supply, you know, you're going to have more than enough, not just for yourself, but to give to the kingdom of God, to give to the poor, to give uh, to people in need, to help your family. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to ask Pastor Paul to pray for the offering. Uh, we don't we don't take the offering. You bring the offering. Amen. In other words, uh, God is not forcing you to do anything, but he's inviting you. Like he said, my yoke is easy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in each life here. And we thank you for the work that you're, you've begun in each one with these healings and touching each one here, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing us in every way. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All righty. So remember we have uh, Wednesday, uh, 7 p.m., we have our uh, mid ser- mid- midweek service. And also if you want to come and pray, be part of that prayer team, uh, come at 6 p.m., one hour before the service to be praying. Um, also on Sundays, we do have prayer at 9 a.m. And and the class with Brother Jeff, uh, the discipleship class, it was uh, very good today about the Word of God, and it's really good. So uh, we did record it. If you want to have the link to it, you have to talk to me because it's not going to be, you know, online, uh, but it's going to be sent to you if you request it. Amen. 
And so, uh, God bless you. We, uh, we're so glad to have you here today. We're honored to have you here. And how many are, are thankful for the word that we received today? Amen. I, I really got a lot uh, uh, today, and, and it's awesome, you know, how I, I can actually learn personally from Jesus through the Holy Spirit and how can actually I can change my pride into humility and, and, and my burdens into a light burden and, and, and the anointing coming along and breaking any other yoke of uh, bondage and, and sin in my life. Amen? So, uh, you know, God took the Israelites out of Egypt, but it took him 40 years to take Egypt out of the Israelites. Amen? <laughs> Some of them didn't even made it into the promised land because they didn't want to take Egypt out of their hearts. And so it's a process, I know, but we need to be like Caleb and Joshua. We need to be people of faith, people that understand our connection with the Lord, our covenant with the Lord, and, and go and possess the land, go and possess and, and you know when they possessed the land, it was it was not easy, it was a fight, but when they were obeying God, they always had the victory. Amen. So God never promised that there was it was going to be easy. You know, it, He didn't say, "Oh, I promise when you get saved, all the problems will go away." <laughs> in, in, uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes. Uh, you get more problems when you get saved because now you have an enemy. But you have a greater ally. Somebody is with you. If God is with you and for you, who can be against you? Amen. So, yes, there will be trouble. There will be uh, uh, tribulation. But trust him. He has overcome the world. Amen. So God bless you and be encouraged today to walk in that you with Jesus and learn from him. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're expecting to hear good reports from uh, the prayer today. We're believing for your healing. We're thanking God for your healing because we're not trying to convince God to heal you. We're thanking God that he already did it. Amen. So God bless you and be encouraged today.